record. Hello, uh, we're here with Council Member Lorena Gonzalez, who is running for a, a Seattle mayor. Would you like to go ahead with your two minute introduction? Uh, well, yes, I would. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair, for inviting me to this um, wonderful process. Um, hi, everyone. I am Lorena Gonzalez. I currently serve as the president of the Seattle City Council. I've been a council member serving in a citywide capacity um, since 2015, when I was proudly elected by the voters of this city the first time and as the first Latinx person um, in the history of the Seattle City Council. So I am now before you seeking uh, your endorsement for uh, mayor of Seattle. Uh, I am excited to be running for mayor. I'm excited to be running for mayor because I believe we are at a critical crossroads in how we are going to address issues related to public safety in the civil rights moment how we're going to address the realities of people who continue to experience homelessness in our city. And, uh, and of course, uh, making sure that we um, you know, continue to focus on an equitable economic relief as we continue to come out of this COVID pandemic and a crisis. So I believe that I'm, um, I am uh, the best candidate for this position, um, given my direct local experience. But more importantly, also the relationships that I bring to this opportunity with the council, with regional partners, with state partners, and with federal partners, that will really allow me to dig into and build a coalition to solve our most challenging issues in those areas. I look forward to answering your questions. Great, thank you. Uh, so now we'll move into the four prepared questions. I'll put the first one in the chat box. And uh, Caitlin, would you like to ask this one? I would. Hello, council member. Uh, what specific actions will you take to address the homelessness crisis in Seattle, both in the short term and long term? Please address land use, zoning, revenue, regional collaboration, the role of social services, and the role of police in the justice system. Two minutes. Okay. So um, I appreciate the framing of the question because I do think that it's correct to think about these solutions in both the short term and the long term. In the short term, I think it's really important as it relates to uh, addressing um, the number of people experiencing visible homelessness in our parks and our other public spaces. It is critical that we take a human-centered, trauma-informed approach to those um, uh, unsanctioned encampments and that we do it in a way that is geographically focused in the areas that we know historically people seek shelter at. So whether that's, you know, 4th and Yesler in downtown or 2nd Avenue or, um, or Miller Park in Capitol Hill, it's important for us to make sure that we are taking um, into account uh, based on geography, why people are coalescing around a particular area and address those needs through a very specific detailed transition plan for every single individual who is residing in those spaces and then connecting them with the outreach and the services and the housing they need. Additionally, it's important for us to continue to enhance and expand our non-congregate shelter options, hotel rooms, strategic acquisitions of underused underutilized capital buildings right uh, buildings right now. Um, these are the things that we need to do to increase our shelter capacity, which is completely maxed out currently. Uh, we also need additional rapid re, re, uh, rapid housing. We need um, additional transitional housing. And in the affordable housing space, we need to provide deep rental assistance, deep rental subsidies. And we also need to uh, make sure that we're addressing our exclusionary zoning laws to allow for affordable housing to occur everywhere, in addition to scaling up our permanent supportive uh, housing. Great, thank you. Uh, now we're moving to question number two. And uh, Barbara, would you like to ask this one? Yeah. Uh, Council Member Gonzalez, what is your strategy for creating dense and diverse neighborhoods and assuring, assuring affordable housing? How would you work to dismantle systemic uh, racist arrangements such as former redlining, including but not limited to exclusionary zoning um, and land use policies? Do you support and uh, might you sign city legislation to end single family zoning? Um, as Berkeley, California recently did. 
I, I mean, um, so I, I want to start off by um, acknowledging that that we cannot solve issues related to people experiencing homelessness without also tackling the question of the lack of affordable housing and the ongoing crisis around how expensive our housing is. The reality is, is that for any individual to access a single family home today, right now, it's it's approximately on average eight hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars to purchase a single family home. That is exorbitant. It's out of reach for many of us. So it is important for us to um, to follow the lead of cities like Berkeley and of cities like Minneapolis, who have allowed for housing choice and density across the city by um, by saying that these exclusionary laws around single family zones are no longer going to be the law of the land. So I would absolutely support that legislation. I would sign that legislation. I would work in uh, in uh, coordination with the city council to uh, make sure that that policy is exactly where it needs to be um, to address this systemic issue. Um, and then the last thing is for creating dense and diverse neighborhoods. Um, it is about building a city. For me, it's about building a vibrant city that has all of the amenities that you can get to within 15 minutes um, walking. And I think that's an important um, goal for us to work towards. Uh, we cannot be a city where in some in some neighborhoods, the only way you can get to a grocery store is by driving, you know, 20, 25 minutes. That is not uh, equitable, and I believe we can build a city that is dense and diverse and has a housing choice if we tackle directly the systemic racist um, uh, legacy of redlining in our community. Great, thank you. Uh, question three, um, Sherry. Would you decrease the Seattle Police Department budget, and if so, by approximately what percentage? And what is your plan for the city's SPAS negotiations? Do you support and will you advocate for ending qualified immunity for law enforcement? I'll start backwards on that one. Um, do you support or will you advocate for ending qualified immunity for law enforcement? Yes. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I was a civil rights attorney for 10 years before being elected to the Seattle City Council. I have now in total worked on police reform issues for approximately 20 years of my life, always on the side of those who have been victims of police brutality and misconduct. So for me, it is important to uh, make sure that qualified immunity isn't a barrier for those individuals to access justice in a court of law. My plan for city's SPOG negotiations um, uh, as a council member who chairs the Labor Relations Policy Committee currently, I'm working on that now. And I'm ready uh, on day one when I'm elected to see those negotiations across, across the finish line to do that together with the council and to hold the line on making sure that the 2017 police accountability ordinance that I negotiated is fully implemented through the next SPOG negotiations. Uh, lastly, on the budget, I believe budget accountability is incredibly important. I was one of a majority of council members who already voted to, de to decrease the Seattle Police Department budget by 18 percent. Um, I stand by those budget uh, accountability mechanisms, and I will continue to do the functional analysis necessary to determine what other functions within the police department and commensurate budget reductions are appropriate to right-size the police seconds. department to scale up community safety based initiatives and to make sure that we are producing true equitable community safety for our BIPOC community members. Great, thank you. And question for uh, Alex, go ahead. How will you prioritize transportation infrastructure for biking, pedestrians, public transit, commercial vehicles and cars? Which do you view as most important to prioritize funds for? Uh, it is my perspective that that uh, this infrastructure and the funding related to transportation infrastructure must be prioritized for the most vulnerable of users. Um, so that means people who are not in cars. It means people who are on bikes. It means pedestrians. It means the mom pushing the strollers. It means people who don't have, um, you know, full ability to to walk or see. Um, and move around our city. So I continue to believe that that is the most important um, thing we can do if we are truly committed to Vision Zero is to invest in infrastructure that is uh, designed around people who are not protected by steel and, um, and driving through our streets. So 
Um, that is how I would prioritize it. I, I fundamentally believe that it is important for us to have that infrastructure. And once we make those spaces safe for pedestrians and cyclists, um, then we prioritize our ways for, for those modes of transportation that are moving the most amount of people through our city. Public transit is incredibly um, important. We need to have more of those uh, dedicated uh, transit lanes across our city. And of course, we need to continue to address uh, freight mobility throughout our city. It's important to our economy, but also on all of this, I think it's important that we remember that when we're talking about how we prioritize transportation infrastructure, it's not just about safety. It's also about meeting the challenge of, clim of climate change and making sure that we are able to achieve our goals around um, being a carbon-free city. Great, thank you. So uh, next we'll move into uh, follow-up questions from the board and uh, the responses to these are one minute apiece. And board members, if you have a question, please raise your hand. Sarah, go ahead. Uh, I'm part of the Environmental Caucus in the 36th and you just mentioned climate change. So how would you use your office to address climate change and ensure a healthy environment and access to climate uh, supporting solutions, particularly with an eye towards environmental justice? Yeah, I mean, I think we have the, the Equitable Environmental Initiative at the city. It was sort of a first of its kind um, standard making um, initiative. I'm proud to be endorsed by Sula Nanda Gopal, who is actually the uh, brains behind that and worked together with frontline communities on developing that initiative. Um, I think we need to bring that initiative to scale in other um, impacted neighborhoods, impacted frontline neighborhoods who continue to experience disproportionate health disparities as it relates to um, climate um, and microclimates within our own city. Um, so that particular initiative was in the Duwamish Valley, which is the hardest hit by many of these issues. But we also have a uh, great need in other parts of South Seattle as well, seconds. and certainly pockets within North Seattle as well, too. So I think those are the kind of initiatives that I want to continue to support. And I want to make sure that we're doing that um, consistent with Seattle's Green New Deal, which I was very supportive of and will continue to be supportive of and implement. Great. Thank you. I just did it. <laughs> Uh, Mackenzie, go ahead. And that's good. That's it's not easy in one minute. So well, well played. Uh, so my question for you is: uh, the city of Tacoma just announced last week that they are going to do a uh, pilot program for universal basic income. And while I understand that a good portion of that is going to be donation based, my question is: uh, do you have thoughts or plans of potentially doing something like that for the city of Seattle? And if so, how would you go about funding that? Yeah, I think um, I think I have long been interested in programming related to universal basic income. I think there are several cities who who have explored with it. I think for for us at the city, we have to first and foremost make sure that it's you know we don't run into issues related to constitutionality and the public gift of fun, funds. Um, so I, I would want to make sure that we are focusing any kind of universal basic income program on those with the greatest need um, and who who really are going to benefit um, the greatest from that kind of program. So um, I think there's a lot of different ways to approach this, but of course, uh, important to me would be to make sure I have the benefit of um, of uh, community experts in this space to help develop a program that is really going to meet those the, the needs of those who need to access the program. How would we pay for it? Um, I am fundamentally seconds. committed to progressive revenue and, um, and, and, you know, setting aside the specific details of any kind of tax proposal, um, in my mind, it would have to be a progressive revenue system as opposed to a regressive uh, tool. Great. Thank you. Any other follow-ups? I have one. Uh, so al although you wouldn't be uh, leading Seattle Public Schools, how would you support its leadership? Um, yeah, that's a that's a really great question. So I currently chair the Governance and Education Committee. I've been the chair of education issues for uh, it'll be six years here pretty soon. Um, almost every single year that I've been on the city council, I would continue to do what I'm doing now, which is making sure that I have regular um, and frequent check ins with the superintendent. 
I also have regular meetings with um, with the school board members. That's been a little bit more challenging to do um, during during COVID, but I will I will I am committed to continuing to to have that those channels of communication and that connectivity. Um, in addition to making sure that I continue with my regular meetings with um, SEA and the labor leaders at the Seattle Education Association to understand the teacher perspective, and also with leaders from um, from many of the seconds. parent parent groups. So I think it's important to have those communications and to continue supporting through our families and education preschool and promise levy. Great, thank you. Just a minor minor meltdown on my side. It's not me crying. <laughs> Mackenzie, go ahead. Uh, there we go. Thank you. Uh, so another question for you. Um, uh, a lot of people have a lot of different opinions in community forums, and especially in District 36 in the Ballard area. And a, a theme that happens often is that this current city council has ran a lot of things into the ground, especially when it comes to the homeless situation. And they Quite often they cite like the Ballard Commons Park of how there's a lot of uh, encampments there. So uh, I guess this is kind of like an opportunity to respond to folks that would say like, well, why would we put somebody who's uh, part of this council into the mayor's position? Um, so kind of like to defend back to that a little bit and to maybe try to um, win their vote. Well, um, I have been proud to be a member of the city council. Um, we have led the nation on and some of our most progressive policies, particularly as it relates to lifting up working families through our labor standards, um, sexual assault protection for hotel workers, hazard pay recently for our grocery store workers. We have led the nation and the city on progressive taxation. Um, and we are working hard every single day to meet the most significant challenges being faced by all of our residents, um, whether you're housed or unhoused. That being said, I, um, I understand and appreciate the frustration with the lack of meaningful progress on solving the crisis around homelessness. And on day one, I will bring to this work as mayor, all of my relationships with the city council, my deep understanding of these systems and my, um, my ability to build consensus around some of these most difficult issues. And I believe that's what the next mayor's challenge will be. Great, thank you. And um, I'll actually give you a little more time on that one if you wanna continue and talk a little bit more about consensus and the plans for building that. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, thank you, Nicole, I appreciate that. I think that, you know, again, um, from my perspective and from serving as a citywide representative, I hear every day from people that they want the issue solved. They want us to focus on the, on the, on the things that we know work. And the things that work to solve human suffering are issues are, are programming related to permanent supportive housing, to affordable housing, to preventative services, to, to, to treating people's um, needs uh, before and while they are in crisis. So for me, building consensus means using my relationships, not just with the city council, but also at the regional level um, and with our federal partners and also with human service seconds. providers and their labor organizations and representatives to really get us focused on what we know works and to drive those solutions every single day as my number one priority. Um, that's how I've governed as a, as a council member and I will continue to make sure that my policies are inclusive, but also um, uh, rooted in a sense of action. Great, thank you. And that gives us exactly, well, almost one minute exactly. So uh, if you would like to go ahead and uh, give a one minute wrap up. Sure. Um, once again, just thank you so much for spending time with me. I, I know that this is a lot of work um, um, uh, holding these forums. So I would be thrilled to have um, the endorsement of the 36th Legislative District. I'm proud to um, have earned the endorsement of uh, several labor organizations, including UFCW Local 21, Unite Here Local 8, and of course, I'm proud to have the endorsement and support of Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal in this race, as well as many others, including um, Representative Liz Berry of this district. 
I am eager and excited to get to work on day one to solve our most pressing issues. I am committed to doing that with a strong commitment to racial equity, and I am committed to doing that um, in relationship and in um, strong allyship with uh, those people in our community who are the closest seconds. to the issue, who I know are also closest to the solution. Um, I haven't given up on Seattle. I'm asking folks to continue to believe in this city. And I believe that together, if we work really hard and dream big, we will um, solve these pressing issues for the city. Thank you for your time. Thank you.